Okay, I'm back. So let's give this a try. Um, the first way I'm going to do this is like we did with Pac-Man, where the name of the map that it saves is just the same file name. Later you can go into Windows and change the name of the file, but the program itself is only going to name it, you know, whatever we call it, like map or something. So that will be our goal here. Open map.txt for output as number one. We're going to loop between one and a thousand and then one and ten, just like we have. Make this, whoop. let me make this window a little bit bigger. Okay, we print into the file, print number one, um, tile, print number one, tile A, and print number one, tile B. Close the file, and we're done. Put a little message box so that we know it worked. I'm going to copy this whole thing, and we are going to go into load, and do the same thing in reverse. We're going to open the map for input as number one, and as it loops through it's going to input these values instead of printing them. Now it's important to cut and paste it so that you do this exactly the same way because the order that we printed them in, that's the order that we input them back out. So um, it's usually easiest to write your save first and then copy it and modify it for your input or for loading a map. So we say loaded, but before we do loaded we're going to say call draw screen. So because when you're loading in you actually have to change something, you've got to draw on the screen what you've done. So let's give this a try. Let's do a little bit of artwork here. Just something simple to make sure it works. Okay, uh, put some cactuses, I still can't see everything because I don't have any room, some edges, hopefully it makes sense how I have this, uh, how these cliffs and things are set up, how you can use the different pieces, see for example I could say, well, Wait, what can I do? Um, okay, well I'm missing some pieces to, in order to draw odd shapes and stuff. But again, whenever you're making a game like this, if you run into a, a situation where you don't have the right pieces, you just draw more pieces, your picture gets a little bigger, and you add those in. It's very simple. Um, you know what I forgot to do here was say land. So I need to go through and do the same thing I just did, but with land selected. Even though the pictures aren't changing because I'm overwriting the originals. Um, oh wait, maybe I do have the pieces. Some of them that I needed. Here we, um, well, here we go, kind of. Yeah, I do have the pieces. Okay. Ignore what I said before. I have the pieces. Um, cause I, I wanted to try to make odd shapes here. So we save it to make sure that it works. It says saved, and now here comes the big test. Does it work when I run it again? Can I load? File, load. It works. So save and load work. That's the quick, cheap, ugly way of doing it. So now I want to show you how to do it um, the, the nicer looking way. You know what I'm going to do to give myself more room? Um, is I'm just going to slide some things around. You know, you, you guys won't be so desperate for room as I am. Whoops. So, uh... Hopefully you guys won't have these same issues as I do. Let's try that. Just for me. Saving again. Um, here's the nicer way. We'll go to save. Oh, uh, before we do, we're importing something, but it comes with, um, I don't, I don't want to say it comes with Visual Basic, it's just, it's already on the system, so it's something that you can pull in. So we go to Project, and Components, 
we're going to be adding a new um, tool to this toolbar over here. For those of you who are new to this, you know, the, our bag of tricks over here on the side. We're going to scroll down until we find Microsoft Common Dialog Control 6.0. Okay? Check that we want it. We hit Apply. And we have a new piece over here. Common Dialog. Now, it's like the timer where we can stick it wherever we want, and when we run the program, you don't see it. Just like you don't see the timer when you have that on your screen. It's just having one does something. You don't, it doesn't matter where you put it. So we'll bring it up. Um, the name of this thing is really long. Common Dialog 1. Um, if it was me, I would normally rename this to something short like CD. Just so that I wouldn't have to mess with it in the future. But I'm going to leave it. Just because. So we have one of those on, the, uh, on our form. So what we can do here, I'm going to comment out that first section. I'm going to leave it so that people who chose the simple way can at least remember that's what it used to say. And I'm going to say this. Um, common dialog one dot, wow, it's long. Show save. Then I'm going to say if common dialog one dot file name equals blank then exit sub, but I'm going to explain this one in a second, this line. This is a fail-safe. This, this here is to protect us if the person using it does something wrong, and I'll, I, I will explain that. We're going to say, instead of open map.txt, we're going to say open co common dialog one dot file name for output as number one. Now let me explain this. Or I'll run it first so you can see. I run the program. Um, here is my glorious map. It has a cactus floating in the air. I hit save and here's what comes up. We've all seen this before. It is the Windows save common dialog actually. The common dialog uh, box for saving. And we could choose whatever we want to call it. I can call it map, map 2. I hit save and it saved it. Um, we don't have the code in for load yet. Go into the actual folder here. You can see there is map two. So it saved it with whatever name on it. It let me browse. I could have picked whatever folder. So it's nice. Here's how this works. When you call this function, common dialog one dot show save, it opens up the save file box. Whatever file you've chosen is stored in its file name attribute. See if we go to it. See, it has a file name attribute. It fills this in for you with whatever they picked, the whole path, like C colon backslash, whatever folder, whatever subfolder, whatever file, it fills all that in for you. So, um, I'm going to skip this line for now. Once the user has chosen where they want to save it, it's stored here. So we're opening this as our file instead of opening map.txt. Because in VB, wherever you can put um, a string, something that you have specifically told it, you can put a variable there instead and it'll work just fine. So this is how we're doing our map. This is what happens if the person hits uh, cancel. If they're at that screen where they're going to save and they hit cancel, that file name is, is blank. Well, if we didn't have this line right here, this line says that if that happens to be blank, exit sub, get us out of here. In other words, it jumps us down here to the end sub. Um, if we don't have that, then it's going to try to open the file to save our file or our map into, but it's blank. You can't do that. It would give you a system error. So uh, that's what this line's for. Okay, so I'm going to take this, copy these first three lines, and I'm going to go to my load. And oh, um, I want to save the original here. I'll just comment it out for those who went with the simpler method. I'm going to paste it. Instead of show save, it's going to be dot show open same idea these line this line here is exactly the same if they hit cancel just get out and open this for not output but rather input as number one and the rest of the codes all the same now my uh, I'm gonna save and the alarms beeping at me so let me save the video <laughs>